And our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who's, who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those with skin diseases are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out in the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in a royal places. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The word of the Lord. So I've got to admit, when I first started preparing for this, I've struggled with this because uh, something just wasn't coming to me, and it took me a while to get this one together. I'm sure anybody who's been up here can relate to that. Uh, I'm sure pastors all over the world relate to that. So it took me a while to have it come to me. I prayed about it, and finally I hope I have something. So um, if it's, you know, this may go real quick, because when you feel like you have a lot to say, sometimes it goes real fast, and you don't have a lot to say, but I don't know. And if... Uh, if it's really bad, I apologize, but uh, hopefully you'll get something out of this. It's only 25 pages long. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, I pray that your words and message are spoken through me, and everyone is uplifted with your words. Amen. John the Baptist's story has always been intriguing to me, uh, not just because he had that long hair and, you know, just he looked like a wild man out there from what I can picture uh, and things I've watched and seen. Um, it's always intrigued me. He's got a very interesting story about who he was and what he did before Jesus and taking care of everything before Jesus came along and just his faith. Um, I'd like to dissect that gospel verse we just lit, I just read to you about Matthew 11. The first part of Matthew 11. So, first of all, I'm going to start with the end that I just read, because I want to get back to that here in a minute. In verse 11, Jesus said to the crowd, Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now, I'll be honest again, I had to do some research to figure out what this truly meant. So, can we pray again real quick? Dear Lord, thank you for giving us YouTube so that I am able to explain this scripture to my brothers and sisters. Amen. Without YouTube, I don't know where we'd be in this world. Um, and I honestly did that because there's so many good things out there of pastors explaining this verse. I, I was amazed when I just did a search for this, this passage, how many sermons came up about it. So um, I really did get some insight on it. So I picked one here. This is what Pastor Ryan Rufus says about this part of our scripture. Jesus explained to the crowd how righteous of a man John is by saying that there is nobody greater than him that has been born. So think about that for a second. That is huge. When Jesus makes that statement, if you compare to some of the great people in the Bible up to this point, you know, you think about Abraham, David, Moses, you know, but Jesus is, puts the exclamation point, you know, on this just by saying at the end, Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And I had to dissect that a little bit more, and this is what I was kind of confused about. What does that really mean? Once I thought about it, it became clear. Jesus is conveying to the crowd there on earth, on earth where we are, that John is the greatest. However, there is a place that is so amazing and so wonderful that even he, John the Baptist, is the least there. So if you think about that for a second, he's saying John the Baptist is the greatest here on earth. But yet, in heaven, he's the least. So what is heaven? 
You know, it just makes you think about, wow, what am I going to see when I'm there? So, you know, obviously Jesus is talking about that kingdom and meaning the kingdom being heaven. Another interesting thing about John as we move on with this, John also knew his place. He knew his place in this great story way before it ever developed. He knew his place. He understood that he is not the light. He preceded the light, which was Jesus, which John knew that right from the start. John never tried to be the light. He never tried to be the Messiah. John was just paving the way. You know, he was, he was setting the stage for Jesus his whole life. That's what he was doing, setting the stage. You know, to compare it to some things, you know, you football people out there, he was the lineman to the running backs. You know, the lineman never get any credit. You know, Coach Biz, he knows. He, we never got any credit. He, <laughs> he, he just pushed us around all the time, made us bit better, but uh, the running backs got all the credit behind us. Um, you know, he was the opening act. John was the opening act for Jesus. And whether it's music or theater or whatever, he was the opening act. John was the moms and dads who put their kids first by sacrificing everything and anything to make sure that their life is great and they have what they need, not what they want, what they need, rather than the parents who think their life is what matters and the kid's life is just going to come along with them. John was like the teachers and the coaches who pour out their souls into making students and athletes the best while not expecting anything in return. John knew his role was to clear the path and to build Jesus up. He was out there preaching about Jesus and building him up. And what is amazing, as far as I can read, John really didn't know what Jesus looked like, didn't know what he was going to come in what form, didn't know what he was going to be, because they had never really met in their adult lives. So John was probably questioning this too. I think that's why we see in that scripture about the questions of, are you the Messiah? So at this time in our scripture, John is in prison because he condemned what King Herod has done by committing adultery with his own brother's wife and taking her, stealing her basically, and marrying her. You have to wonder, was John questioning his belief and his faith in, you know, in the coming Messiah, whoever this Messiah was, because he's in the dungeon. We think about a prison in those times it was a dungeon. It wasn't what we see nowadays. Maybe, you know, maybe he's questioned that faith because of being in that dungeon and speaking out against immorality. Maybe that is why he sent his followers to ask Jesus if he truly was the Messiah. I don't think Jesus, or I don't think John was losing any faith at all. I believe he was solid in his faith. In a moment, we'll hear Jesus emphasize that. So, was he questioning himself, or was he questioning his followers? Maybe his followers were losing their faith in John's preaching of, you know, what the Messiah was going to bring. So maybe John sent them out to see for themselves. Because sometimes, you know, in life, we've got to go out and actually see it before we believe it. And so many times I know that's happened with me, and I'm sure that's happened with you. We hear things, and we're like, oh, yeah, that'd be great, but I don't believe it until I see it. So maybe that's what he had to do, was send those followers out there so they could see it. And what did Jesus say to them when they got there? And he had, they asked him, are you the Messiah, or should we wait for somebody else? Jesus said, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those with a skin disease are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. I thought it was very interesting the way he answered that way. You know, Jesus could have just said, yeah, I'm the Messiah. Go back and tell John, I'm the, I'm the Messiah. Why did he answer that way? He answered that way because he fulfilled the prophecies that were already given way ahead of that. And I've read those in our other scriptures this morning. He, he made sure he, he was doing those things that fulfilled those prophecies, and he wanted John to understand that and the followers to understand that. So he sent them back with that message. Speaking of those prophecies, those prophecies were about a king coming. A king, not a carpenter who walked among the poor, the lame, the thieves, the broken. So it was natural that many, including John the Baptist, had questions as to whether Jesus was the Messiah or not. You know, you think about that, everybody was probably waiting for, you know, we're waiting on a king. 
They're probably waiting on this big parade. They're probably waiting on this great, great person to come down, and you know right away, wow, they're the king. Jesus was going through his life, you know, walking among the poor, the lame, the thieves, the broken. You know, he, that's what he was doing. If this were happening today, and really, how do we know it's not, <clears throat> think about what would be going on today with today's technology and everything we have in the world today to verify that the man out there healing people and performing miraculous events was truly our Lord and Savior. Facial recognition. We'd be like, whoa, there's Jesus. Let's facial rec- you'll get facial recognition. Fingerprints. There'd be a deep dive into their social media posts. Every time I'd be researching all that. There'd be an internet search of the pictures that are out there about Jesus. Make sure that's what he is and he's out there doing what he's supposed to be doing. There'd probably be an FBI raid on his house. Cell phone records would be seized. You know, there'd be all these things that we have nowadays of how we would justify and realize that this is really true to the Messiah. So that made me think, how would Jesus prove today that he is who he says he is? If he came today and we were in that time and we had all the technology and everything, and how would Jesus prove today to us that he is, he is the Messiah? He might say, look, here's the video of me being born in the manger. You know, because maybe we had the video of him being born. I'm friends with God on Facebook. That's how I'm going to prove to you. Give me your cell phone. I'll make sure you have service all across Harrison County. (laughs) Which still amazes me that we don't have that. CNN, Fox, MSNBC are all going to report that I am him. Well, that might not make us believe that. There would be very many things different today compared to back then that they didn't have that he had to prove. And, you know, I think if Jesus were here in modern times, he would do just what he did back then. He basically would go back and fulfill those prophecies. It's the same thing, because when we go right back to it, we've got to go back to that. He fulfilled those prophecies. He'd be healing, helping, loving, caring, providing for everybody. And I think he'd be doing exactly the same thing, which he continues to do. So, after Jesus sent John's disciples away, he continued speaking to the crowds and continued to build up John and John's greatness. Jesus asked them three times, what did you go out in the wilderness to see? So he's talking to those people, you know, what did you go out to see when you're going out to see John the Baptist? Because he was out there preaching this. What did you go out to see? The first question was, a reed shaken by the wind? Basically what Jesus was talking about here was, did you want to go out, did you go out there looking for a weak leader? who sways with the wind every time somebody says something and changes their mind every time something's blown to them? That's not what you went out to see. You want to see somebody strong, strong, stand firm on their faith, stand firm on their principles. The second question was, someone dressed in soft robes? Those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. You know, as we all know, in those times, kings lived in those royal palaces. Sometimes those kings were tyrants. The type of kingdom that John and Jesus were preaching about, they weren't the same as those kingdoms that the kings lived in. They were talking about a kingdom that serves the people rather than people serving the kingdom. So it was a different kingdom when you're speaking of that. The last question was, did you go out to see a prophet? Jesus says, yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, This is the one who it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Again, Jesus is emphasizing to the crowds about another prophecy being fulfilled. So he goes back onto those prophecies that that we already have. So where does all this fit into our lives here today and what message can we take from this? Well, maybe you found your cure for insomnia because you might have been sleeping through this last part that I just talked about. I don't know. Maybe that helps you. I hope it does. If it does, great. I think there's many messages from this one little piece of Scripture. Faith, honor, loyalty. You know, John demonstrated all those things when he stood, it stood firm on what he was talking about. You know, whether you've been a part of a team, a business, an employee, whatever it is. You know, faith, honor, and loyalty. There are times where what you're doing, you have to be loyal to this, what you're standing for and the cause that you're involved with. Loyalty is a big thing. You know, we're talking about 
how loyal John was to Jesus, you know, sometimes, all the time, we've got to be loyal to the, what we are representing. You know, and a lot of times I don't see that nowadays. I think a lot of this is thrown out to the side because people want to, they want to be selfish and they want to be on their own. You know, sometimes we've got to stand firm in what we're doing, even though we don't necessarily agree with some of the things happening right in our organization that we're involved with or, you know, what's happening. You've got to be loyal to who you're involved with. And the faith and the honor, you know, I, I don't think there's any better demonstration of faith than John. John was in a dungeon. A dungeon. You know, he could have just gave up. He could have just said, you know, I'm done with this. I've been out there preaching this and the Messiah hasn't saved me. I'm, I'm in a dungeon dying here. You know, but he didn't. His faith stayed, start, stayed firm. Another thing we could have pulled from this is how to handle doubt. In fact, doubt could have been the entire sermon today. A lot of those passages that I was researching, that was the whole message. It was about doubt. You know, we're, we're doubting what is happening. We're doubting whether Jesus was the Messiah and all through life about doubt. It's common to have doubt. We all have doubts about things throughout life. But if we have faith and we follow our Lord and Savior, He will show us the way. No matter what's going on in our life, whether we're questioning whether we're doing a good job and everything that we're doing with our jobs and our businesses and our, our life with our kids, you know, whatever it may be, there's going to be doubts. That's natural. You know, second guessing yourself is not a bad thing because you go reevaluate what you're doing and we're going to have doubt. So you have to reevaluate that. But again, you've got to have that faith that we are being guided by a higher power. Things that are coming through us and into our minds, like my last uh, sermon I gave, you know, those, those voices in your head, you know, those are, that's a higher power giving you those voices. So um, we, we're going to have doubt, but listen to those voices that there and be, have that faith that there's somebody there with you. The title of my sermon today is, Are You the Messiah? And obviously, you know, with what we just read, it reflects the verses in Matthew that I read to you. Are you the Messiah? I guess that's a question of the day for all of us. That may sound blasphemous. Are you the Messiah? I'm not saying that you're supposed to walk around and claim that you're Jesus. Um, but Jesus did tell his disciples and all of us to go out in the world and preach his teachings, to go out there and do what he did, live like he lived, act like he acted, love like he loved, care like he cared. That's what we are supposed to do. You know, we're supposed to bring Jesus out through us to everybody out there. So, essentially, we are Jesus in another form. We're bringing that love and all that stuff that Jesus did, we're bringing that out. He should be projecting through you. When you go out to the world, and I know many of you, it happens all the time. When you go out in the world, you should be, he should be projecting through you. So, I ask again, are you the Messiah? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing us your only Son, the Messiah, to show us how we are to operate our daily lives and keep us within the bounds of your love. May each of us go out each day and spread the love of Jesus. Amen.